The following is the Learfield presentation of the Washington State Sports Network. This is the Cougar Football Hour on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. We're committed to being great here. I'm proud to represent Washington State. I know the people that wear their cougs all across this country, they're proud to be a part of Washington State. Why not be here? Why not cheer on this team? Why not Why not see this environment and make it something special? What an opportunity to show who we are as cougs. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Zeppos, where the Palouse comes to play and eat. Now, live from Zeppos, alongside Cougar head coach Jake Dickert, here's the voice of the Cougs, Chris King. So good to be back. It was the bye week last week, but here we are back at Zeppos for the Cougar Football Hour. Coach, it's great to see you. Well, it feels like we haven't played in a minute, but bye week, second edition, uh, you know, much needed, much welcomed, and just excited to be back here, but more importantly, excited to be back on Geese field this Saturday night, Palouse after dark. Uh, it's just an exciting time uh, of Cougar football right now. Amen to all of that. And what a show we've got planned tonight. Not only do we get to catch up with you, we have John Mateer here tonight, his Cougar football hour debut. Yeah, I mean, we can just cancel my segments. <laughs> Let's uh, don't worry about questions for me. Let's get a big box of questions for John here. We'll get him an extra segment. Let's give him his due. Um, how, how good has John been? He's oh, just been goodness. amazing. Uh, just kind of lifting up and obviously we'll get into San Diego State, but another just impressive performance down the stretch to go do what he does. Uh, he's just a special talent. I think he really embodies what it means to be a Coug. So excited for him to get underneath these bright lights yes. and sit with you and answer questions. It'll well, be fun. And we know, I mean, he has some great post-game interviews with Alex Brink. So we, we, we have the taste of just how good of yeah. an interview that he is. So it'll be fun to have him uh, uh, right here with us. Okay, the bye week. Tell us before we get into San Diego State, how was the bye week? It was good. I mean, it's just another opportunity. Obviously, unique deal with two of them this year. Uh, we kind of stayed on the same mode because it, you know, worked the first time. Uh, so really, the first week was just getting them back healthy. You know, we out were outside for a couple of practices and went to the new Taylor Sports Complex and had another young guy scrimmage and a couple things like that. You know, and then come back Sunday night, it's ready to get back to work. I mean, our guys have been extremely hungry. Everything we put before them, you know, they're ready just to, you know, more, more, more. Uh, we actually canceled meetings tonight just because we've been grinding for about five days on Utah State and just excited about where our team's at and the focus and the mentality it takes to go be our best on Saturday. So that's been the whole deal. And obviously there's a lot of exciting things, you know, around the mechanism of football right now. But, you know, within the inside of it, our guys are focused and determined to be their best this Saturday. And I know since we were here last, the Cougs ranked now at number 20, 7-1. and one. So, so much uh, to, to be excited about. Yeah. And it's, it's a 1-0 and mentality, and it's Utah State this week. But just taking a moment to, uh, yeah. to recognize that because that, that is just such a great accomplishment for everyone. Yeah, and I think it is important as you go throughout, you know, long journeys and, and football really is a long journey when you look all the way back to the January preparation, the spring ball, the summertime, and then once you finally get to your season, you know, so we took a little pause last week and just showed the big picture. Uh, excited about the phases that we've been through, the fast start of the first five games, kind of that middle three games was a tough stretch in a period to get there and then, you know, just say it, set the journey on what we can accomplish with this group together. So, like I said, our guys are highly motivated to go out there and, and perform and you know I think purpose is huge as you're going through something hard it can't be a pressure it can't be a weight it's just got to be something that we really enjoy and what's special about this team is they really enjoy you know the hard work and being around each other so I think that's been easy for us the last couple weeks another example of the team being battle tested and finding a way was that last game uh, almost two weeks ago 12 days ago now late night in San Diego 29 26 the Cougar victory over San Diego State. How do you look back on that one? Wow, what a, what a game. <laughs> what a game that was. Find a way is the one way to put it, Chris. I mean, you know, it was another one of those things where, you know, we kind of had that little, you know, mid-game lull a little bit. And obviously San Diego State on that field, which was not great, a little bit unplayable if you ask me. Uh, but at the end of the day, our guys went out there, looked each other in the fourth quarter and find a way to get it done. And it's kind of been a little bit of the recipe of our season. I mean, guys 
refusing to lose, knowing that, hey, wherever we're at in that situation, let's attack that moment. A quick score on offense, followed by a defensive takeaway. Stop me if you heard this before. Followed by, you know, going down there and scoring a, a, a big uh, touchdown, obviously getting the two-point conversion. Hopefully everyone liked that two-point conversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Good call back there. Uh, yeah, I know the heat I take for those ones. That one didn't go exactly as we drew it up either, but it ended up working mm-hmm. out. Uh, Chris Hudson didn't panic, got it to John. Um, you know, and then defense go out there and get another big stop at the end of the game, and then offense, you know, runs it out. So it, it was one of those moments that was really big for our football team. Obviously, a lot of celebration in that locker room, doing it again. But my biggest message to the team, Chris, was, you know, that type of heart and determination and just finding a way, like, I can't give them that. They have earned that. The belief that the team has that, okay, we've, we found ourselves in this position. Let's go, let's go find a way to get this done. Like, they have to do that themselves. And now there's a core belief that no matter what happens to us, we can, we can find a way to win. And, and we did that again down in San Diego. And the thing with games like that to me is when you rally in the fourth quarter, there's not just one moment you look at. There's multiple moments. Yeah. The Buddha oh, Aluk no. to pick really stands out. But I'm thinking about that catch that Kyle Williams made yeah. on the drive that the before the Buddha Aluk to pick, that's one that certainly stands out. Yeah, that was that was kind of the momentum starter, right? Because, you know, he went down there and it was kind of reaching over the top of him, big fade ball. And then obviously Carlos Hernandez on the scramble in the over and it's like, see, he told you guys we're right back in this thing, you know, so Kyle's been one of those playmakers for us that we need to continue to have, and, and he can be one of those momentum starters, and it just got our offense kind of reset back in rhythm, and I thought they were, you know, believing more after that point, and, you know, I just think you saw that through the rest of the game. A phrase you use, refuse to lose, and you talk about that with John Matier. I think of refuse to be brought down, that play in the fourth quarter where it looked like he was dead to rights, and another example of a uh, little John Matier magic uh, turned in what could have be easily been a negative play into a pretty good game. I mean, it's got to be one of the top five plays of the season. You know, I think John maybe has the other four as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, with the defensively, Stephen Hall and Ethan O'Connor making some pick sixes, but kind of like Houdini back there. They thought they had him. You know, that would have been second, I believe, in 28. Instead, you know, he spins out of it. He almost creases it to go the whole way. They kind of heel clicked him, uh, but that is John Matier, and you know, like I said, in scrimmages, when he would be mad at me for blowing the whistle dead, I now believe that it's really hard to tackle him. And I think those other teams are finding those things out. So uh, it's special. And I thought John did a good job of utilizing all of his skill sets uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, the designed runs, the scramble runs, the throwing in the pocket. So we continue to see things that he's really comfortable doing, and he keeps elevating his game, which to get to where we want to go, we'll need to continue to see him rise and get better. The fun thing about tonight is we, we've heard that story from you about blowing the whistle and blowing some dead early in yeah. practice. We'll get his side of that story oh, yeah. tonight. Oh, he gets heated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets heated. So it's, that's the competitive nature of him. And, and sometimes I tell those guys, like, I'll throw a flag or I'll blow them dead just to see how they react, right? You got to put those guys in uncomfortable situations to, uh, to simulate game days. And I think that's part of the reason why our guys haven't flinched. You know, we call it being bulletproof. You know, in fall camp, we put them in these tough situations. We put them in fourth quarter comebacks or, you know, we've done a good job in the four minute drill of running the ball out when we've had those opportunities. So uh, that was a big moment in the game on that third down. John off a sprint out scrambling um, and getting that first down, which they took away. Then they moved back. Then we got right. So it was one of those moments that that was a heck of a play, too. So there's always those little things that lead to, to big wins. And I think that's what you saw through the course of the game. Feels like one of the great storylines for the team over the last couple of games is the play of Ansel Dimbu. Ended oh. up having three sacks in that game against San Diego State. A good game for the defense as far as the total number of sacks. He had three out of the four. What's allowed him to wreak such havoc these last couple of games? Uh, just a great story, Chris. I mean, he really, at some point early in the season, a little bit lost his confidence. And I'm okay saying that. And, you know, we kind of switched some rotations, and then he earned it back. He now believes everything we've been teaching him the last two years. You know, Ansel played as a true freshman, and now he's really being that player that we know he can be. And his confidence level, you can hear him on the sideline. You know, he's one of those energy guys going up and down the sideline, getting everybody hyped. He's playing well. He has extreme confidence in his technique and what we're asking him to do now, and he can be a heck of a pass rusher. And we're led by sacks by our interior defensive line, which – 
is unique and different. You know, now we need to find ways to get those guys in one-on-one situations because they've now proven that they're hard to handle in there. And now you have Dave and you have Ansel. I mean, that, that's a tough one-two punch in the interior of our defense. Boy, those guys doing a heck of a job. Yeah. And uh, Ansel stepping up. Dave, what he has done throughout the season, uh, that has been so fun to see. A great scene after the game. So you, the team gets this victory. Oh. Playing down in San Diego, there were a lot of oh. Cougs there at Snapdragon Stadium. Uh, we could kind of feel it from the booth. What was it like down on the sideline and then being able to celebrate with all those Cougs after the game? Well, I know it, if, there, if you guys weren't there, I mean, there was a point in the fourth quarter, there was a go Cougs chant happening in someone else's stadium. Like, it was, uh, it was a big deal. I mean, and that's a credit to Cougs. I mean, that was just awesome to be a part of. But I think that... That's part of that, that edge, that environment that we talk about, Chris, that is just – that matters to our guys. To see that support, to see Cougs out there, to see the energy that they provide, I mean, it is just everything. You should have saw on the tape, you know, because the right angle, you can see Buddha get that pick, and then the Cougs were right behind them just erupting and standing up. I mean, it was like it felt like a home stadium at times. So it's just such a big, big deal, Chris. And any time I tell our guys – you go into enemy territory and you can sing your school song there, it is a big deal. And I think that's what we took away from, you know, that game at uh, San Diego State. And so many kook ties to Southern California, the cherry on top. And I, I was saying that Alex Spring, Justin McIntyre, Jerry, Kylo, we were, we were all down there. We were saying, boy, for any kook fan in the future thinking about a road trip to make, San Diego, of course, is a beautiful spot. Well, that, that, it, that stadium, maybe the turf wasn't the greatest, but the stadium itself is new and nice. Yeah, it must be hard to grow grass there. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know the ins and outs of that. Um, but I just think, like, seed and water, and it should be okay. I I don't I don't know that um, you know but let's let's not it's a good place to vacation yes because it'll make you a little soft now that's fair right? you don't want it too nice that's fair right? you don't want it too nice right so uh, that's what we said after the locker room like so guys we, we spent our time here we came and got what we wanted let's let's head back to that 30 degrees it feels good to us great spot for 48 hours 48 <laughs> is, hours is, is. come back with the victory yeah. that's exactly what the Cougs did well we will take a break here on the Cougar football hour still to come as we said John Matier will join us a yep. little bit later we'll have our preview of the Utah State game and get to our listener and audience questions. That is all coming up. More with Jake Dickert after this. You're listening to the Cougar Football Hour live from Zephos here from Learfield. Dear Traction, Toyota has 22 vehicles with available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive to grip every twist and every turn. Come rain, slick, sleet, or snow, leaves, mud, gravel, or sharp turns. Tackle the trails in the nimble RAV4. Drive steady in the all-hybrid Camry with all-wheel drive available on every trim. Or turn up the traction in the beefed-up Tundra with available four-wheel drive. Find those wheels at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. You may be eager to break ground on a new outdoor project, but never just start digging. Buried electric and natural gas lines can be anywhere. It's the law to call 811 at least two business days before you dig. Spray paint white lines showing your dig zone, and a crew will mark the utility lines. Mark accuracy zone is within two feet of the mark, so always hand dig to expose the line first. Call 811 before you dig. The service is free for residential customers. Avista, we just want you to be safe. Are you interested in your company reaching Kook fans in and out of game day? As the multimedia rights holder for Washington State Athletics, Washington State Sports Properties helps companies and organizations connect themselves to Cougar Athletics in unique and exciting ways. Whether it's creating brand awareness, driving product sales, or entertaining employees or clients, Washington State Sports Properties has the resources to help your business achieve its marketing goals. Reach out to Washington State Sports Properties to learn more about what sponsoring the Cougs can look like for you. This is former Coug, Eric Coleman. Goff intercepted, touchdown coming into the end zone, Eric Coleman. And you're listening to Cougar Football. Go Cougs. Whenever I see somebody purchasing something with their WSU card, I always like to give them a go Cougs. It brings me back to when I was in Pullman. From the rolling hills of the Palouse to keys jingling before every kickoff, there's something special about being a Coug. That's why BECU created the WSU credit and debit cards. It's just one more way to show pride for a place we all call home. Grab your WSU card today. BECU, power in people. Membership required. Restrictions apply. Call 800-233-2328 for details about credit costs and terms. Federally insured by NCUA. Member compensated for participation. 
Hello, I'm Mike McVeigh from McVeigh Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Windows, and also an alumni from WSU, the best college in the state. Go Cougs! And for over 65 years, I believe our competitive edge has been selling the very best roofing, siding, and windows made at a great price with the best team of professionals installing it. And during our anniversary sale, we're offering 10% off your next project up to $3,000. So give us a call today at McVeigh Brothers. We're always working for you. This is the Cougar Football Hour. He'll run himself, still up on his feet, looking for a blocker. He's still going. Touchdown, John Mateer. Third and 20 from the 25. Doesn't matter. Mateer makes some magic again. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Here's the voice of the Cougs, Chris King. Back at Zeppos here on the Cougar Football Hour with Jake Dickert, the head coach of the Cougs. Coming up later tonight, John Mateer, WSU quarterback, will join us. So excited for that. And, Coach, uh, just a couple of uh, kind of lightning round questions for you here. Hoops got started on yes. Monday night. Big one coming up tomorrow against Bradley, a really quality matchup there at Beasley Coliseum. It's a fun time of year, right, when, when football's in this point of the season, basketball's getting started? Well, I think it's, it's not a better time to be a Coug. You know, I think you should be proud of really all programs out there. And, you know, I coined it after San Diego State, but it seemed like it continued. A little cardiac Coug action. I think we got down a little bit in both games and had to work our way back. And it just shows a little bit of result to the Cougs. And I've been there. There's, there's not a more maybe nerve-wracking time as a coach just when you prepare your team and then game one. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I think there was moments in that game where uh, Cammy wasn't too happy. You know, I think everyone knew that, and they came all back, and, and Coach Riley's team, man, that's going to be exciting to watch. I mean, they can pour <laughs> threes in. I mean, you were right there. They can pour threes in from all over the field at all or at court um, at all positions. So I think we got another couple great teams uh, to, to watch. So I, I think the women are at Stanford pretty yes, soon, right? Uh, tonight, and yeah. Then, yep. uh, and then obviously Bradley be, um, you know, two great tests early in the season, and it's going to be a heck of a year for for uh, Cougar Athletics. Looking forward to that. And as you said, Monday night was a, a fun kind of a test run. Both teams, maybe a little, like you said, a little tighter than they would like, but ultimately the uh, the right outcome in the end for uh, both Cougs hoop squads. Uh, scout Bowl. We talked a little Scout Bowl before. Yeah. Scout Bowl again today. What can you give us as far as an update on how the young guys did? Well, I'm just really happy with our young guys, first and foremost. And we've never had the ability to scrimmage this much uh, with our young players uh, that we have this season. And I think that's a dedication to them, their preparation, and I think as you go and build a program, you know, hopefully you continue to climb and, and recruit, you know, better and better talent. And Kenny Worthy, a corner, uh, really has been really good the last couple uh, scalpels and had a pick six today. Everyone was celebrating, running all over the field. Uh, Kamani Jackson has his bookend on the other side, which is really positive. And we're seeing a lot of great steps from Evans Chuba. You know, I mean that. His his quarterback, the talent is easy to see. He can rip it. He can run it. Uh, but to see him play a very controlled game is really good to see. And, you know, some of those other pieces that we talked about have been really good. So Jalen Edmond, we are going to redshirt him. So he's been, you know, working with some of those young guys' scrimmages. And he's a unique talent that can play corner, can play safety, can blitz. You know, it's just been fun to watch those guys compete. And uh, probably won't uh, see him again until Turkey Bowl, you know, Thanksgiving morning. These guys get out there and scrimmage. There's nothing better. Well, I've been fortunate enough to ha have a peek, and my favorite part of it is seeing how into it the veteran guys wow. are. That is so cool because when there is a big play, they are going nuts cheering on their teammates. Well, I think it's just a sign of team. You know, when those old guys, yeah, they could go in the locker room and go to brunch and watch it from upstairs, but they're out there not, not just cheering them on, coaching them, telling them what to look for. I mean, it gets really competitive, you know, on each side. And, you know, I think it's just because they're joyful. Like, those guys – Playing on scout team and, and doing that grind of 60 plays a day and you don't get a lot of rotations. It's just, you know, you go in that fight together. But I also tell those old guys to remember when they were that time, you know, and put yourself back there and remind these guys it's it's coming. It'll come for you. Just keep preparing and getting better. So it's been fun. You know, I see KT over there like he got mossed a couple times by Ben Dutton this week. I mean, he, but he wants to see him doing well. So it's just it's just fun to see the competitive nature of our football team and the support that they have for each other. Okay, so 
later on the show we'll get to a lot of our audience listener questions but kind of we'll we'll kind of combine multiple into one here because okay. something people are excited about and i know you know you're focused on this week but the college football playoff yeah. rankings came out what were your thoughts on, on where the kooks ended up in that where did we end up no, where did we kidding. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you haven't heard right yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's awesome to be a part of. I mean, it's one of those things that you talk about that, uh, you know, it's early. We got four games left. Uh, but to, to see yourself in there is the proof of a lot of hard work and really rewarding for our football team. Obviously great for recruiting, great for the recognition of where our program is now after three years of being here. So our, guy, our guys know, you know, it's one game at a time. I don't have a path to the playoff. I don't have what needs to happen. We just need to control what we can control and focus on, you know, being our best on Saturday which is still out there for us. But, you know, it's absolutely something that you just don't ignore. You, you know, we talk about it just a little bit, and let's stay true to the little things that got us here. So it's obviously an exciting time. And, you know, college football has been crazy this year. You know, so there's a lot of things that can happen that could put yourself in a position uh, to get to where you want to go. Well, the next step of the journey for the Cougs, Saturday night at Giza Field, Palouse after dark, the opponent Utah State. We'll have a preview of the Aggies. That's coming up after this. We are live at Zeppo with Jake Dickert. You're listening to the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. At U.S. Bank, when they say they're in it with you, they mean it. Not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows, and decision-making. They're in to help you through all of it because together they're proving day in and day out that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Hey, Coop fans, can't decide what to do with your late night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Nothing works up an appetite like cheering for your Cougs on game day. So why not cheer them on at Northern Quest with an impressive roster of restaurants and lounges? You can tackle the menu at Epic and catch every play on the 10 by 30 foot screen. Or grab a steak at Maslow's, a fine cigar at Legends of Fire, even a burger from Fat Burger. You know, for your inner linebacker. See more at northernquest.com. Go Cougs! You're listening to Cougar Football on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup as the top college athletic programs for the 2024-25 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite team or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2025 to the winning institutions in all college sports divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Okay, you say, I want some breakfast. Your so-called boyfriend says, we got eggs in the fridge. Obviously, when you say breakfast, you mean McDonald's. Definitely a side-eye situation. And now, it's a BOGO situation. With buy one, get one for a dollar on sausage McMuffin, burritos, hash browns, and more. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for item of equal or lesser value. ba da ba 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 Welcome back to the show. Time now to look ahead at this week's game with the Coors Light Opponent Preview. Coors Light, choose chill. Proud partner of Cougar Athletics. Celebrate responsibly. Well, Cougar Nation, each time you bring your Toyota vehicle to be serviced at a local and participating Toyota dealership, you can receive a premium Washington State giveaway item as a member of the Toyota Rewards Program. To join the program, visit wsucougars.com slash Toyota Rewards. Back here on the Cougar Football Hour, still to come, John Mateer, WSU quarterback, going to stop by. But here with Jake Dickert, we've got our, oppo- our opponent preview. Utah State, they're coming to town. 
what has jumped out most? And you've been prepping for the Aggies, studying this team uh, about the squad that's coming to the Palouse here on Saturday night. Well, I think the first thing is a very, you know, now a very unique style of offense. You know, they're still doing the, you know, play as fast as you can, uh, really super wide splits. I mean, it was really a few years back, you know, the, the Dino Babers, the Josh Heupel, Tennessee's doing it now at a really, really high level. And it's very unique, you know, because a lot of people have gone against playing so fast so getting our guys you know from not you know playing for a couple weeks to playing at that type of tempo they run you know the fourth fastest offense in the country by analytics and they have some explosive pieces you know they played a couple different quarterbacks you know now their new one that's playing uh, the transfer from Iowa is more of a thrower and I think the tailback is a really really high level player and what drives their offensive engine is a really good offensive front that runs a really unique you know kind of zone scheme pin pull scheme you'll see a lot of different pull and trappers and and different things that kind of get your guys out of position and out of gaps and then they are explosive uh, in the screen game and then I don't care what zone you run when you're standing next to the sideline and that guy's you know you're just so wide you end up getting one-on-one -on -one matchups all over the place so um, you know it's a high tempo very dangerous offense and they've scored points essentially on everybody you know the one thing that has held them back a little bit as a team is sometimes when they turn the ball over right and then obviously just like it does for any other team it'll spin the other direction pretty quickly so but they're never out of it I believe they scored 30 points on Boise in the second half and they can do it quickly so you got to stay focused you got to stay determined and we'll have to stop the run to try to make them one-dimensional and then I've played these defense or these offenses a lot as a defensive coordinator when you get those third down opportunities right you got to get off the field so if we can do that on third down you know you can limit a lot of plays because they, you know they want to play 100 snaps a game with their type of tempo. Your quarterback you referred to there, Spencer Petras, you mentioned he was at Iowa. He started over 30 games at yeah. Iowa. This is his seventh year of college football. So pretty fair to say that this isn't his first rodeo, the quarterback for Utah State. No, it isn't. And I think he's playing very confidently. You know, I, you know, it's a very different style of football from Iowa, from being under center and ground and pound and ground and pound and ground and pound to now letting him show his arm strength. But there's been plenty of times when he's thrown that uh, hash to opposite sideline kind of comeback ball with some great zip on it so and the cold weather is not going to surprise these receivers right so we know we got to go in there and play a physical brand of football and and go out there and play at our pace offensively they've shown how potent they are defensively it's been a little bit of a tougher go for them what have you seen from their defense well I think the, the biggest thing is a lot of injuries on that side of the ball you know so very multiple very diverse in their attack they'll be four down they'll be three down they do like to bring a lot of pressure and they've created a lot of different you know TFLs through bringing that type of pressure uh, variances and different coverages always a little bit of a unique style per week uh, against USC you know similar offense they did a lot of the three down stuff and you know we'll see but we got to be able to run the football you know it's been part of their Achilles heel I mean you can study the tape and see that so you got to be willing to come back to that well over and over and establish a level of dominance at the line of scrimmage and our guys are capable of doing that and we're excited about going putting that on tape and then getting some playmakers in space off of that and while from a win-loss record probably not the season that they were hoping for at this point coming off a victory against Wyoming and uh, you know I know you've you've used this phrase uh, the, you know the Cougs are the hunted at this point yeah. and this would be a major feather in their cap if they could come in here and have success yeah they played a couple of tight games I mean the last couple of weeks I mean the New Mexico game they had it and lost it a little bit late and then went out there and won a close ball game against Wyoming you know on the road which which is a big thing and whatever league and whatever level you play at so absolutely and the biggest thing I use that phrase for is hunters attack. They're, they're not worried about what's trying to get them. They're in the attack posture. You know, so our guys got to understand whether it's high or low or whatever we in a, in a football game, let's go get them. We're going to play to win. And that, that means a lot of different things. But, you know, we got to play aggressively to our strength and lean into our strength as a football team. And I think that's what good hunters do. And a great opportunity to do that coming up on Saturday. 7.30 kickoff at Giza Field against Utah State. Our coverage will start at 5.30. Derek Dice, Billy Newman will get things started there. Coach, we'll let you loose for now. But maybe first, give us give us an intro. we got John Mateer here. Oh. What does everyone in attendance here at Zeppos, everyone <laughs> listening, watching, yeah. need to know about John Mateer before he makes his way up to the stage he's really nervous right now everybody look at John he knows it but I there's not a better uh, player or person that you'd want representing
football team and uh, just the competitive nature. And, you know, obviously John's story, you know, I'm really thankful that John didn't sign with that F FCS team in the first signing day. Uh, we actually relive the story today with Coach Rob, our GM. You know, we dropped the guy that we had committed to us December 9th. We started contacting John like December 15th and then obviously brought him up for a January visit. And it's led to all this a couple of years later. So it's been an amazing journey and we're only eight games in. So he'll tell you he's just getting started. Well, we'll be able to dive into that journey coming up. But Coach, we'll talk to you again a little bit later on. Up next, John Mateer will join us here at Zeppos. The Cougar Football Hour rolls on after this. You're tuned in to the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 60 daily departures to more than 20 nonstop destinations provided by seven major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not To Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist, end the friendship. Or choose chill because that song lives rent-free in your head anyway. And you are planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party. And the sound of that ice-cold can cracking open was music to your ears already. Coors Light. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Bro, you go hard for the WSU Cougs. What do you mean? You're literally wearing a Coug jersey that you bought from the Coug store with your Coug debit card. And you don't stop talking about how every time you use your card, Gisa donates to the Cougar Athletic Fund. I guess I do go pretty hard for my Cougs. If you go hard for your Cougs, get your WSU card today at Gisa.com. Go Cougs! You're listening to Cougar Football on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital are being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Hey, Cougar fans, the 2024 football season is here, and SeatGeek is here to help you experience all the action. SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Washington State football games or to any other live event in your area, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticket marketplace of the Washington State Cougars. The most disruptive idea in ticketing? A ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. This is the Cougar Football Hour. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Here's the voice of the Cougs, Chris King. Back at Zeppos here on the Cougar Football Hour. And a huge thank you to Zeppos, our great hosts of the Cougar Football Hour. And we've got a giveaway. Zeppos is going to be giving away right now two game tickets and two DIN passes. And we've got a, a handy little wheel here. Going to hit this, and we've got all the names on it. And uh, we'll tell you who the winner is here coming up in just a moment. And we'll let you know as well. There will be a, another giveaway Zeppos will be doing with the same prizes. Follow Zeppos on Instagram. Uh, congrats to Susan Santos Ball, so the winner of two game tickets and two den passes, courtesy of Zeppos here. So we'll Who's that? pass this along and uh, say congrats to Susan, and we will welcome in John Mateer, WSU quarterback John Mateer. Let's give hey, it up for the Cougar quarterback who has <laughs> hey, already created uh, so many memorable moments in a WSU uniform. Here you are, your debut on the Cougar Football yeah. Hour. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Coach Diggers, right? I'm a little nervous, but a little it's nervous. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. You won an Apple Cup. This is the Cougar Football Hour. That's, you, yeah, you've that's done. True. You've done big things here. Yeah. Well, my coaches prepare me for football. 
I get less prepared for these, but you know. Here we go. You're you're a natural. We'll uh, we'll be off to the races here. Cool. So, uh, the bye week. How is the bye week for you? We see you have a lot on your shoulders, kind of week in and week out. What does it mean to have that second bye and mm-hmm. to to gear up for this final stretch of the season? I think the second bye week is great, just so all of our players can get our feet under us again. You know, I took a beating against San Diego State, which I enjoy, and we won. So whatever it takes, <laughs> right? Um, but. It's it's important to be able to get away, relax, and Coach Dicker does a great job letting us um, recover. And we had two practices, two very good practices. Um, but to be able to hang out over the weekend and just have fun and get back going this week was great. Well, it has been a roaring success. Your time as the starting quarterback here for the Cougs. But Coach Dicker described it as the journey that brought you here. And I want to hear in your words, mm-hmm. what was your path like? You're a Texas native. How did you end up from, from Little Elm, Texas, to here to Pullman, Washington, and where you're at now? It was a long one. Uh, I didn't really get recruited my first three years of high school. And then even after my senior year, which I played pretty well, um, not a lot of schools came, came calling my way. I was committed to Central Arkansas, the FCS school, and I decided not to sign early because I just believed that there was going to be more out there in the second signing period. Um, and then Coach Morris, who was at Incarnate Word, he – he got the job up here and re-offered me up here, and uh, it's a no-brainer, a no-brainer. And it's crazy because I made a list my sophomore year. You know, during COVID, I didn't have a whole lot to do, so you're just sitting there. Uh, and I made a list. It was like eight schools, eight dream schools. Um, it was like Florida, Texas A&M, TCU, all the, you know, Texas. As a Texas kid, you named Texas schools, and then Washington State was on there. Right. You, you you know how to tell a good story to right, this right, crowd. Right. Why we, why was Washington State on your radar? What what made the the Cougs end up on that list for you? At, even at the time when I look back at it, I couldn't tell you. If I had to guess, it had to be that team that won the Alamo Bowl. Gardner Minshew was here. Like it was really the first time that I like really noticed who they were, and I was a, like it was appealing to watch. Um, and that's probably why. And it all worked out. Yeah. So, so that day comes around. You were you were committed to Central Arkansas, mm-hmm. but your phone rings. You look down, uh, maybe a five oh nine number, whatever yeah. it is. You answer it. You say, "Hey, it's John," and you get a call from the Cougs. Can mm-hmm. you tell us what happened from there? Well, it wasn't that perfect. I had decommitted from them. <laughs> okay. Earlier, just hoping that something would happen, and then it happened. We were. I was in the airport, about to go on my visit to New Mexico State. Me and my mom were in the airport, about to board. I get a call. We're going to offer you. We start crying right there in the airport. It was super cute, super cute moment. Because I knew we were going to New Mexico State, but I feel bad for those coaches. I was not going to New Mexico State. I was going to – I was not. The next weekend, an official visit up here, and I knew even before I came up here, I was going to be a Coug. And here you go, three years later. And to give folks an idea, and you correct me if I have this wrong, but, but looking earlier today, you were committed to Central Arkansas, had offers from Columbia, Incarnate Word, and Houston Baptist. Am mm-hmm. I leaving anyone off? Yeah, there was there was a couple more. It was I don't even remember. It was like five more FCS schools. Like Stephen F. Austin was on there. Ford Ham was on there. Yeah, yeah. And to give folks an idea, those high school rankings are are fun, but they don't really matter. Twenty four seven Sports had you as the one hundred and twenty fourth quarterback ranked in the country mm-hmm. for that class. Did, when you're seeing it at the time, does that give you a big chip on your shoulder? Are you thinking, I I, I know I'm better right. than this. At the time, it did. Now, I think one thing about the recruiting and the rankings is if you're good young, you're going to be ranked very high. Like, I played as a freshman on varsity in Texas, but I wasn't I wasn't an elite talent. I could just – like, I could throw, but I wasn't an elite talent like some of the other guys that were my class. Now, over time, I developed – I think I developed at a higher rate than the other guys did. Like, they were good young, but then they stayed. Like, but I feel like I developed at a higher rate, and that's why it bothered me because I wasn't going up the rankings at the same level that I was developing. Um, and, of course, you know, going into games, I would play quarterbacks. I played Jackson Arnold in high school. Uh, he was at Denton Geyer. Um, he's the quarterback at Oklahoma right now. And I just wanted to outplay him in that game because I knew there was going to be scouts that game. And I don't really remember. I have a bunch of respect for him, so I'm not going to say I outplayed him in that game. But I believed I was better than him. You certainly held your own then. Right, right, right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, the the Cougs are very happy it has worked out the way it has. Something when Jake Dickert has described you, and not just tonight when you're here, uh, has described you as the ultimate competitor, has described you as a refuse-to-lose kind of guy. What are the the origins uh, of your competitive spirit? Where does that come from? Well, I appreciate those words, Coach Dickert. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) That means a lot. Honestly, I think 
um, just my family, my parents, they always told me, like, if you want something, you got to earn it. It has to be undeniable that you need to get a win. Like, to get a win is going to be undeniable. And I had a basketball court. It was, like, right next to my house. And I would always go play against, against some older kids. And they were never – I appreciate them. They were never just going to give the win to me or go easy on me. And I, ha- I had to go as hard as I could if I wanted to stay on the court because if you lose – you get kicked off the court, and they don't put you, they don't pick you back up. And just from there, and then all my friends, and played with a bunch of older kids, and you had to get every, give it everything you had. And I just hated losing. I've, I've always hated losing. So, well, thankfully this year you haven't had to experience <laughs> right, much I of agree. it, and uh, that basketball court has uh, has really paid off yeah. uh, uh, down the line in your athletic career. Coach Dickert has also described him hey, practice. You've hated it when he has blown the whistle dead when you've been out running and using your legs. Mm -hmm. What's it like from your perspective? And I know for you, some sprinkled in opportunities in your first couple of years, but this is when you've Mm -hmm. been fully unleashed. How has it been when you've been in these big games against Texas Tech and Mm UW and of these eight games, the Cougs winning seven of them and actually getting to be like, hey, I'm out against these teams and I'm making it happen with my legs. Now, I don't blame him because nobody would have known that I could break tackles, you know, like sure I can run. And I did it a little last year, but I broken a couple tackles this year, you know, that pretty cool. But uh, like San Diego state, <laughs> there was certainly one in that one too. Right. And so I don't blame him for that. Yes. It pisses me off. I don't get it. It doesn't make it. I'm, it me and KT at one-on-one KT's not tackling me. I'm sorry. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's been, it, I think it's, it just makes the games even more fun because it's real and it gives me another chance to compete like one-on-one. Like, I dare you to try to take me to the ground. I don't think you will. Um, and it's fun. Like, I do enjoy carrying the ball and running the football, if y'all couldn't tell, because it's just I just get to compete so much in that moment I'm holding the ball. Well, it's been so fun to watch. We are here with John Matier, WSU quarterback on the Cougar Football Hour. We will take a quick time out when we come back. More with John Matier. That is all after this. You're tuned in to the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. At U.S. Bank, when they say they're in it with you, they mean it. Not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows, and decision-making. They're in to help you through all of it. Because together they're proving day in and day out that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Hey, Kook fans, can't decide what to do with your late-night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppo's. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppo's is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppo's.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppo's. Whether you root for the Zags or the Cougs, now's your chance to play for your favorite team. It's the Winning Colors Challenge at Northern Quest. Simply pick up your special Gonzaga or WSU Camus Rewards card now through November 30th and play as usual. Whichever fan base earns the most Camus points wins $10,000 for their program. Become a card-carrying Zags or Cougs fan during the Winning Colors Challenge only at Northern Quest. This is Drew Bledsoe, and you're listening to Cougar Football. Bledsoe calls his play, has the ball, throws a home run ball from the end zone. The bubble! Oh! Washington State! On the Washington State Sports Network. Get game day ready at Rosars. Rosars is a proud sponsor of WSU Athletics and your headquarters for keeping snacks stocked up for game time. You'll find the largest craft beer selection, local and imported wines, and all the makings for your favorite cocktails. And while you're there, stock up on your favorite deli snacks, pizza, rotisserie chickens, and ribs. Don't just watch the game. Experience it with your favorite game time foods. Get game day ready at Rosar's. Get your home turf ready to play with the game-changing performance of steel. Enjoy big savings this fall on steel handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at over 10,000 local steel dealers. 
Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. This is the Cougar Football Hour. The Cougs get the stop. The Cougs get the stop. Cougs take over. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Here's the voice of the Cougs, Chris King. It's Cougs fans versus Zags fans in the Northern Quest winning, winning Colors Challenge. Get your WSU Camus Rewards card and play for the Cougs. The fan base with the most points wins ten grand for their program. Details at northernquest.com. Back here on the Cougar Football Hour at Zeppos with someone who knows a thing or two about Northern <laughs> Quest, John Matier, the yeah. quarterback of the Cougs here. And, and John, uh, the, just thinking about you and what you've been able to do here, you've done it with, with your own kind of style. I feel like you, no headband tonight, yeah. but when we see out on the field, you have the headband. Uh, what's the what's what's behind the headband? Where did that come from? Always wear the headband? No, actually, this is the first year I've ever worn a headband um, because I would see pictures of me after the game. I have some crazy helmet hair that I did not like. And you look like someone you got you got good hair. I mean, I appreciate a, that. Yeah, thank you. Um, but then I saw KT wearing a headband one day, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that. You know, I look up to KT, so I'm going to do whatever he does. Uh, I put it on, and I was like, this is pretty cool. And then it was an opportunity to put my put my merchandise on a headband, JMX. That's a thing. Um, so you can go get, buy it. Get your very own. You yeah. com. You can go buy it if you want. Uh, but, yeah, I just I like the look, and keeps my hair out of my face so yeah i like it we've had a lot of good post-game interviews with it yeah. i know with our own alex brink someone you know very yeah, well yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of conversations with him and a question came in uh, asking about how your how your mom liked pullman you talked about you and your mom having that great moment when you mm -hmm. were going to head to new mexico state uh mm -hmm. is the family feel like they are they are kooks too when yes. they come here and cheer you on yes they do they're kooks through and through um they, my mom's only been up here like two or three times she came up here for the visit she came over here to move me in I guess four times because she came up here for my first ever game against Idaho my freshman year. And then she came up here against San Diego State when the collective thankfully flew her up here because – and they surprised me. I don't know if you all saw that video, but it was pretty cute. You yeah. know, I, I, I didn't cry. I wasn't going to cry because I'm not going to do that. can't do that. But, but it almost happened, you know. She uh, went to the lumber yard and – she walked up behind me, and it was, it was a good moment, and I appreciate the people that made it happen. That is really cool to see. Well, uh, you have created a lot of great memories for Coug fans here so far through eight games this season. I'm just curious to you. You've been here for three years, and not that you've been mm -hmm. working in the dark, but you know, there's a great quarterback room that has mm -hmm. been that class you were with, with Cam Ward and Emmett Brown and guys yeah. who've, who are having success as well this year. I'm just curious to you. You've been here for three years. You have this opportunity this year to take over as a starter. What does it mean to you to be a Coug and to represent WSU football? It means a lot. I'm honored to be in a position that so many good quarterbacks have been in um, to wait it out makes it even sweeter you know I had to wait behind Cam Ward and compete with Emmett the whole time and learn behind um, Cam and it was fun I learned a lot right but being in this position now and seeing the work that it took and, and the people that believed in me to allow me to do this and be in this position, it's been great. Well, it has been such a pleasure to have you here tonight to watch you out on the field. Now, everyone here is excited to see you and your teammates <laughs> back at it at Gisa Field on Saturday night. Yes, John, sir. thanks so much for being here, and Thank go you. get them against the Aggies <laughs> yes, Saturday. Sir. I got you. Go Cougs. Again, go that Cougs. is John Matier, the quarterback <laughs> of the Cougs, stopping by Zeppos tonight on the Cougar Football Hour. When we come back, we'll be rejoined by the head coach of the Cougs, Jake Dickert, as we get to some of our listener and audience questions. It's all after this. You're listening to the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not to Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist. End the friendship. Or choose chill because that song lives rent-free in your head anyway. And you're planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party. And the sound of that ice-cold can cracking open was music to your ears already. Coors Light. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado.
Kook fans, you love rooting for the Crimson and Gray, and now McDonald's has even more for you to cheer about. Because this season, you can score big with the 20-piece McNuggets bundle when you order on the McD app. Get 20 golden, juicy McNuggets, plus two orders of the medium fries you know and love, all for just $11.99. McDonald's and Cougars football, now that's what I call a W. Must opt into rewards at participating McDonald's valid through 2024-25 football season. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. This is former Coug, Eric Coleman. Picked off, intercepted, touchdown coming into the end zone, Eric Coleman. You're listening to Cougar football. Go Cougs. At U.S. Bank, when they say they're in it with you, they mean it. Not just for the good stuff, the grand openings and celebrations, although those are pretty great, but for all the hard work it took to get there, the fine-tuning of goals, the managing of cash and workflows, and decision-making. They're in to help you through all of it because together they're proving day in and day out that there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Visit usbank.com to get started today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC, copyright 2024, U.S. Bank. Want to earn some extra money this winter? Spokane International Airport is hiring multiple seasonal snow removal equipment operators. These are on-call positions for the upcoming winter season from November 2024 to March 2025. You can earn up to $36 an hour. Some positions require a CDL, and previous experience in operating snow removal equipment is highly preferred. Join our team today. Learn more and apply by visiting SpokaneAirports.net. is the Cougar Football Hour. He'll run himself, still up on his feet, looking for a blocker. He's still going. Touchdown, John Mateer. Third and 20 from the 25. Doesn't matter. Mateer makes some magic again. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. Here's the voice of the Cougs, Chris King. The Junior Cougs Kids Club is presented by Toyota. It is the official kids club of the Washington State Cougars, and it is the best way for the youngest members of Cougar Nation to show off their Cougar pride. Find out more information about your Junior Cougs membership perks at wsucougars.com slash jrcougs. Back at Zeppos on the Cougar Football Hour, rejoined by the head coach of the Cougs, Jake Dickard. How great was John Matier? That was a blast. Oh, John's the best, and I think you just get to see a little bit of his personality, his competitive, tough nature, and I was watching... I think a basketball game the other night and all of a sudden, you know, we're in a new era, right? And John comes up in his Northern Quest commercial and uh, I told him we got to work on his acting skills a little bit, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's okay. He's doing great and uh, it's just, it's just fun. But, uh, you know, it is a unique deal where uh, through the NIL, I mean, we have a lot of opportunities through the Cougar Collective to support guys like John. And I think that's big for the future of our program because, uh, you know, these other teams aren't slowing down and, and John is sweeping the, you know, the, the nation. So just know that there's an opportunity support guys just like John to keep him here in Pullman through the Cougar Collective and, and just excited about what he's doing and, and his story is really cool. Well, that is great to hear. Let's get to some of our listener audience questions. Uh, I've gotten this one before. You made a comment a couple weeks ago uh, about retiring the anthracite helmet and I think that perks, perks some ears. Was it just is did that I, where it is? That, that come out? In the rotation? That's There's just some things that, you know, we, we've adjusted a lot of things through the football program and uh, you know, one thing we had to do was was pick uh, between the four, and uh, you can't lose the crimson, you can't lose the gray, and we have the white. So uh, it was the anthracite. So um, yeah, that's that's not going to be in the rotation this year, and uh, we'll see if it makes a comeback in the future. That's fair. Well, we yeah. we can say we uh, we got that one asked um, right now. Uh, where we're at, let's take another break. When we come back, we'll get to the rest of our questions. Right. Again, more of our listener audience questions with Jake Dickert. That's all after this. We're live at Zeppos on the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. With the WSU debit card from Gisa, it's hard to tell who's supporting who. When Coug fans use their WSU card, they show off their Coug pride and donations are made back to Cougar Athletics. But the card supports the Coug fan with big savings by helping them grow their money with Smart Plus checking. So, does the card support the Coug fan or does the Coug fan support the card? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that the WSU card supports Cougar Athletics and your wallet at the same time. Get your WSU card at Gisa.com. Check it account transaction requirements, terms and conditions apply. Insured by NCUA. Coors Light presents To Chill or Not to Chill. When your friend skips your favorite song on the playlist. End the friendship. 
or choose chill because that song lives rent free in your head anyway and you planned ahead by bringing Coors Light to the party and the sound of that ice cold can cracking open was music to your ears already Coors Light choose chill celebrate responsibly 2024 Coors Brewing Company Golden Colorado this Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital are being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Nothing works up an appetite like cheering for your Cougs on game day. So why not cheer them on at Northern Quest with an impressive roster of restaurants and lounges? You can tackle the menu at Epic and catch every play on the 10 by 30 foot screen. Or grab a steak at Maslow's, a fine cigar at Legends of Fire, even a burger from Fat Burger. You know, for your inner linebacker. See more at northernquest.com. Go Cougs! Back after this local timeout on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup as the top college athletic programs for the 2024-25 college athletics season? You can follow the standings of your favorite team or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2025 to the winning institutions in all college sports divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On Sirius XM College Sports Radio, there's complete coverage of every major conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash College Sports Radio 24. Back at Zeppos on the Cougar Football Hour here with the head coach of the Cougs, Jake Dickert. All right, as much as time allows, let's get to our listener and audience questions. Uh, a really good one here from Jennifer Delzer. What sport do you think is most complimentary with football for high school athletes to play, the one that helps the best to develop skills that translate to football? Oh, that's a great question. You know, and I think, uh, you know, you've had a lot of detailed conversations with our GM, Rob Schlager, and obviously with a skill kid, you love to verify the speed and track, right? When Chris, Chris Barnes ran 10 3 9 or 10 2 in, in the 100 yard dash like that dude can fly and then uh you know those skill kids i love watching basketball the lateral quickness the ability to move your feet even the big guys you know we just have a, a verbal commit uh commit to us and uh, he's a great basketball player as a 6 6 big guy i love wrestlers I hate sitting in the big sweaty room, like watching these guys <laughs> practice. It's a sauna in there. And it's like, yeah, I, I like the kids and the mentality of that and the leverage that it takes. Um, you know, you, you talk about going down to like, you know, Polynesian communities and watching them play rugby. Like these guys are tough physical players. Like if you can do that and tackle like that, you put a helmet on you, you can do a lot of big things. So I just love multiple sport athletes and guys that don't just specialize in one thing anymore. And that's, that's a piece PSA to parents out there. Just don't don't get them into one trainer in one sport. Let them get a wide base of athletic talents. And, uh, you know, we love recruiting multiple sport guys. We also look for captains and, you know, those in-person evals, seeing how you're treating teammates and how you compete is a big deal. Well, good question and a good Great answer one. there. Um, another one here. Thoughts about strength of schedule and how it's measured and how it impacts postseason. Well, I think it's one of those things. I mean, anytime you deal with humans and panels, you're going to have an imperfect system, right? So no matter what you do, there's emotion involved. There's this logo should be better than that logo. So I'm just a big believer. You know, let's settle it on the field, and eventually let's get to a 2018 playoff. I think that would settle all this stuff. Well, there we go right there. That is Jake Dickert. The Cougs back in action Saturday against Utah State. 7.30 kickoff. A big thanks to Coach. A big thanks to John Matier. Uh, thank you back in the studio to Luke Howard.
Hallett, Jerry Kylo here on the audio side, Jared Pringruber on the video side. That's it. We're signing off from Zeppos for the Cougar Football Hour. Go Cougs. See everyone Saturday. You've been tuned in to the Cougar Football Hour from Learfield. Go Cougs. You've been listening to the Cougar Football Hour on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Tonight's show has been brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a proud supporter of Cougar Athletics. Together, there is nothing as powerful as the power of us. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Zeppos, the home for the Cougar Coaches Show, where the Palouse comes to play and eat. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Washington State Sports Network.